this is going to start our wild edible search video. We're going to show just a few wild edibles. I uh, had a request from a viewer specifically for that. We're going to show just local ones and know that we are not professionals. So please do what? Do your own research. <laughs> Ask someone who is a professional. Don't just go out and eat taking our word for it. <laughs> Okay, hun, so are we experts about wild edibles? No, we're not. <laughs> but we love learning. We're learning all the time. This is one of our favorite books. It's the Peterson Field Guide's Edible Wild Plants for Eastern and Central North America. We like this one a lot. We've used that one a lot. And what book you have there, Esther Pye? She has Wild Berries and Fruits by Teresa Marone for Illinois, Iowa, and Missouri. And we have found that to come in very handy. That one's got cool pictures in it. She loves to look at the pictures. Pictures are worth a thousand words, aren't they, folks? Ooh, pretty colors. <laughs> Hi, Esther Pie. What is that there? Lamb's quarter. That's lamb's quarter. Let's get a good look at it. I'll zoom in on it. Okay, that's lamb's quarter. And how do you eat lamb's quarter, Esther Pie? I cook it like spinach. You cook it like spinach? Okay, thank you. Good job, honey. Okay, all these wild edibles that we are going to highlight are going to all be within like 100 feet of our house. So we are not having to go search for these far and wide. They are right here, right by us. So here it will be number two. Hey, Nathan, what you got there? Blackberry. Cool. What is thorny? It's a thorny blackberry, so yeah. it's a wild blackberry. Mm -hmm. How do the wild blackberries taste? Well, not as good as the thorny blackberries, but it tastes good still. Hey, Nanny Bug, what are you climbing there? A persimmon tree. A persimmon tree? Yep. He's climbing a persimmon tree. So it's not even budding out yet. So I'll get close so you can actually see the bark. So you get an idea what to look for on the bark and the branch. So this persimmon right here is number three on our wild edible list. Nathan, what you doing up there? Climbing. What are you climbing? A red bud tree. A red bud tree. And are red buds edible? Yep. What part of the tree is edible? Flower. The flower? What else? The pods. The seed pods are edible as well. And how do you eat the flowers? You just pick them off and eat them. You just pick them off and eat them. Mm -hmm. Did you know you can make jelly out of them? Yep. And you can also fry them and make like a, almost like a candy out of them. Mm -hmm. They're really good. And the pods you just fry like you would um, green beans or something like that. Or you do not fry, but you just cook them like green beans. Mm -hmm. They're good. So let me show you red bud leaf. That leaf, isn't that cool? That's the red bud. This is number four on our wild edible hunt. There's a shoot right there of what? What is this? I don't know what it's called. Greenbrier. Greenbrier. Now, what part of the greenbrier is edible, Nathan? The shoots. The shoots. You want the tender stuff, the, mm -hmm. the newer stuff. Now the other leaves are also edible, but they're not nearly as good as they get more mature. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and try it, Nathan. Pick it up and eat it. Mm, How's it taste? It's in between um, asparagus and lettuce almost. There you go. Tasty. It's tasty? Mm -hmm. Nice. You sure are good looking. Okay, what's that, Joseph? Anna. Show us. Anna. Pick one. All right, you gonna eat it? Mmm. It's onion. Yeah. You like it? Mm. <laughs> you think it's tasty? Mm. Yeah. And that's a wild onion. Yeah, I can that. Yeah. Now, onions and chives, these can look very similar. There is um, something that's a replica. Um, 
that is not edible so make sure you consult and, and make sure that they are but these are definitely the wild onions we've picked all these and eaten them a bunch and uh, do you like them Nathan mm -hmm. yeah me too what are those Joseph can you say jewel weed? Can you say jewel weed? When I get white, when I get white back then I count them. Yeah, jewel weed is awesome for poison ivy and poison oak. If you get poison ivy, poison oak right away, you take this. Show them how to do it, Nathan. You just like you don't want to use the root. You just like you take. You don't use the root. You just take it and then you like kind of break it and, and let's say you had it on your arm, you just go like that. Rub it on. Yep. You want the juices. You want the juices, right? So you get the juices going, flowing, and then you rub it on and it will nullify um, poison ivy and poison oak. I mean right away. It is the best thing that I've ever found for poison ivy, poison oak. So that was just a bonus for you. What you got there, Nanny Bug? An autumn olive tree. Autumn olive tree. And what does it grow? Autumn olives. Yeah, what do they look like? Uh, red. At first they're pink, then they turn red, and that's when they're ripe. That's when they're ripe. Are they yummy? Yeah. They're really good, huh? Yep. How big are they? Mm, about this big. Like the size of a blueberry? Yeah. Not, not the huge blueberries, but the regular size blueberries? Mm -hmm. What can you make out of them? Um, jelly. Um, you can probably make jam. Yep. One of the other cool things about the autumn olive is that we have had our chickens actually climb this tree. Climb up here on the branches to eat the autumn olives. Uh, that was really funny to see chickens, like higher than my head, way up here, climbing up this tree to get the autumn olives. So that was number seven on our wild edible hunt. Now you're getting chased by a kitty. <laughs> what are you climbing there, Nanny Bug? Is that a mulberry tree? Mulberry tree, yeah. There's a mulberry leaf. Backs of them, the bottoms of them. There you go. So there's the mulberry. That is number eight on our wild edible hunt. What we got here, Nanny Bug? This is May apple. May What's edible on the May apple? Well, this is going to turn into a little fruit, that flower. And we have never actually tried May apple because. Why? What happens every year? When they're just about to turn ripe and we can eat them, the critter always gets them. Yeah, the, the wild animals always get them. And they're really touchy. You have to get them at just the right time. So they're tricky. That's number nine on our wild edible hunt. And here's a fun one. What kind of tree is this, honey? Black cherry. Black cherry. Have we got... Have we gotten any cherries off it yet? We have, yeah, a few. Mm -hmm. It looks like this year there's going to be quite a bit more than before. Yeah, looks like it. It's really got a lot of blooms on it. That's number 10 on our wild edible hunt. All right, Nanny Bug, what we got here? Black cap raspberry. Black cap raspberry. Now, how's this different from regular raspberries? Well, it's black. Yep. Super tasty. Yeah, super tasty. Is this our favorite wild edible? Uh, maybe. This, I don't know. this might be your favorite wild edible. Mm -hmm. It looks quite similar to a raspberry. The canes are darker, um, and they act different. They come out and, and just fall right over immediately. So that's number eleven on our wild edible hunt. Okay, here's one. This is elderberry. And I'll get you close so you can see. First thing you can notice on here is the bark is really warty. Uh, and then the leaves come out in clusters like this. And elderberry 
as uh, medicinal. It's super good for you. Make elderberry syrup just straight up. The seeds of the elderberry are not edible. So don't eat the seeds. You strain out the seeds. That's number 12 on our wild edible hunt. Hey, Joshy, what you got there? This is the skinny leaf plantain. The skinny right here. That's the skinny leaf plantain. Mm -hmm. And here's the wide leaf plantain. And here's the wide leaf plantain. What medicinal purpose do they have? If you put it on a bee sting or something like that, it'll help it. Stings, yep. Really, really good on wasp sting, bee sting, any of that kind of stuff. So we would also assume that any kind of poisons is probably very helpful for that. This is winter cress. It's one of the first things that comes up in the spring and sometimes even lasts through the winter. You kind of cook it like spinach and it tastes pretty good. This is yellow wood sorrel. The flower is closed up because it's getting on to evening time, but it's the leaves that identify it. It sets up three little heart-shaped leaves. Uh-huh, and what part of it is edible? The leaves are what we eat. They're really tart and yummy, but you don't want to eat too many of them raw since there's oxalic acid in them, just like a lot of greens. So, yeah, throw them in the salad. Add a little tart flavor to your salad. Yeah, like they are yummy. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Tasty. Yeah. All right, what we got here, hon? This is ground cherry. Ground cherry. And it's too early to really tell what you eat, but it's going to get a little... Uh, you can see the leaf there really nicely. And the leaves are fuzzy. Yeah, and you, it's going to have something like a little mini cherry tomato on it in a husk. And it's actually poisonous to eat until that husk dries out and the cherry inside turns yellow. But when that little cherry turns yellow, it is so good. It's They're really yummy. You just have to wait. They, they're warm weather uh, plants, so they're not ready until the end of the summer, early fall. And last year, the ground cherries um, could never last because every time we went on a walk, I could get mail or something. What happened to all the ground cherries every time? <laughs> Joseph Zilla. <laughs> Joseph Zilla. He'd run and eat them. And this here is gooseberry. Gooseberry, we find it all over the place here. Well, it's mostly found in shaded spots and uh, by water. Um, but we have the creek down there and we have a lot of shade because of all of our trees. So we have a lot of gooseberry around here. It produces a kind of a translucent looking, what color does it get, hon? It turns like almost black. It turns almost black. This what, particular variety. When they're ripe, right? Yeah, there's different varieties that are different colors. They look like drops almost though when they're coming out. It's pretty cool looking. So that's gooseberry. That's number 17 on our wild edible. This is chickweed and it comes out early, early spring. And the little, it gets little teeny white flowers that are closed up right now. But the leaves are in pairs going down the stem. And you can eat the whole thing. It's really good in salads. It's pretty mild tasting. So that's what's nice about it. And it's abundant. It's everywhere in the spring. And chickens love it. Yeah, chickens and who else? Do the um, geese and ducks love it too? I think, I think they like it too. What about the cows? Oh, the cows love it. The cows just munch it they like it's, a, like it's it. candy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep, it has a lettucey taste. This is dandelion. Most people know what dandelion is, but uh, here it is, the flowers closed up because again it's evening time but a lot of people like to eat the flowers in salads. They say they're kind of sweet. I haven't really noticed them to be that sweet but <laughs> and you can also eat the the greens but they're pretty bitter but super nutrient nutrient dense. And these just grow like on people's lawns as weeds. Yeah. Right but they're actually a, a very good for you food. Yeah lots of nutrients. <laughs> well that was the wild edible hunt here on the Smith's Dead, thousands of roots. And thank you so much for joining us on this journey and on this hunt. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Thank you.